This is part 1 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss what is ASP.NET Web API, what are RESTful services, difference between WCF and Web API, and when to use one or the other. So what is ASP.NET Web API? The term API stands for Application Programming Interface. ASP.NET Web API is a framework for building web APIs that is HTTP based services on top of the .NET framework. The most common use case for using Web API is for building RESTful services. These services can then be consumed by a broad range of clients like browsers, mobile applications, desktop applications, IoTs. So what are IoTs? The term IoT stands for Internet of Things. Internet of Things are the objects or devices that have an IP address and can communicate over the internet with other internet enabled devices and objects. Examples for IoT include security systems, electronic appliances, thermostats, cars, etc. in addition to desktops, laptops and smartphones. One important thing to keep in mind is that though ASP.NET Web API framework is widely used to create RESTful services, it can also be used to create services that are not RESTful. In short, ASP.NET Web API framework does not dictate any specific architectural style for creating services. In this video, we'll discuss creating RESTful services from scratch using the ASP.NET Web API framework. So what are RESTful services? REST stands for Representational State Transfer. REST was first introduced in the year 2000 by Roy Fielding as part of his doctoral dissertation. REST is an architectural pattern for creating an API that uses HTTP as its underlying communication method. The REST architectural pattern specifies a set of constraints that a system should adhere to. Now let's look at the REST constraints. Client server constraint. This is the first constraint. Client sends a request and the server sends a response. This separation of concerns supports the independent evolution of the client side logic and server side logic. This is a straightforward constraint. We've got a client and a server. Client sends a request to the server and the server responds to the client request. The next constraint is the stateless constraint. The communication between the client and the server must be stateless between requests. This means we should not be storing anything on the server related to the client. The request from the client should contain all the necessary information for the server to process that request. This ensures that each request can be treated independently by the server. Cacheable constraint. Some data provided by the server like list of products or list of departments in a company this data does not change that often. This constraint says that let the client know how long this data is good for so that the client does not have to come back to the server for the same data over and over again. Caching avoids unnecessary processing and significantly increases the performance of the system. Uniform interface. The uniform interface constraint defines the interface between the client and the server. To understand the uniform interface constraint, we need to understand what a resource is and the HTTP verbs get, put, post and delete. In the context of a REST API, resources typically represent data entities. Product, employee, customer, etc. are all resources. The HTTP verb get, put, post or delete that is sent with each request tells the API what to do with the resource. Each resource is identified by a specific URI, Uniform Resource Identifier. The table right here shows some typical requests that you see in an API. The resource here is employee. So the URI for slash employee. So the typical URI might be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash your website name may be prajimtech.com for example forward slash employees. That's a URI. And that URI with this verb get is going to get us the list of all employees. And HTTP colon forward slash forward slash prajimtech.com forward slash employee forward slash one. So one here is the ID and that along with get HTTP verb is going to return us employee with ID equals one. 
forward slash employees with the post verb creates a new employee on the server. Forward slash employee forward slash one with put verb is going to update the employee with ID equals one and the same URI with delete verb is going to delete the employee with ID equals one. We'll look at examples of all these in our upcoming videos. Another concept related to uniform interface that we need to understand here is HATOS. So HATOS stands for hypermedia as the engine of application state. All this means is that in each request there will be a set of hyperlinks that lets you know what other actions can be performed on the resource. If this is not clear at the moment, don't worry, we will discuss this in a later video. There are two other constraints as well, layered system and code on demand. Code on demand constraint is optional. We'll discuss these two constraints in a later video. Now let's discuss the difference between WCF and Web API and when to choose one over the other. WCF, Windows Communication Foundation. We can also use WCF for creating RESTful services. So why do we have to use ASP.NET Web API? The problem with WCF is that a lot of configuration is required to turn a WCF service into a RESTful service. The more natural choice for creating a RESTful service is ASP.NET Web API, which is specifically created for this purpose. So when should we use WCF over ASP.NET Web API? WCF is more suited for building services that are transport or protocol independent. For example, you want to build a single service that can be consumed by two different clients. Let's say a Java client and a .NET client. Java client wants transport protocol to be HTTP and message format to be XML for interoperability. Whereas the .NET client wants the protocol to be TCP and the message format to be binary for performance. For this scenario, WCF is the right choice. What we do here is create a single WCF service and then configure two endpoints, one for each client, that is one for the Java client and the other for the .NET client. If you're new to WCF, please watch our WCF video series. I'll have the link available in the description of this video. There's nothing wrong to use WCF to create RESTful services. It's just that it's a bit more complex and configuration can be a headache. If you're stuck with .NET 3.5, or you have an existing SOAP service you must support but want to add REST to reach more clients, then use WCF. If you don't have the limitation of .NET 3.5 and you want to create a brand new RESTful service, then use ASP.NET Web API. In our upcoming videos in this series, we'll discuss creating RESTful services from scratch using the ASP.NET Web API framework. So please stay tuned. Thank you for listening and have a great day.